Hey y'all, I am excited to kick off this next episode of Cocktails and Conversations. I am going to be sitting down with some friends and role models, women who have helped shape my life and encouraged me on my grow and glow up process. We're going to talk about all things 30, what we're looking forward to in the future, lessons we've learned in the past, and of course, our favorite cocktail. Enjoy. Okay. <laughs> um, but today we are talking about all things 30 and, um, you know, the, the glow up and uh, kind of the enlightenment period that comes as we age. I kind of was just thinking like, yo, like 30 has been pretty lit. <laughs> like, I wonder, if, I wonder if other people feel the same way or what, um, what has been like their, their like 30 from 30 for me, like where everything just kind of falls into place and just kind of clicks, you know? And so for me, that has been this past year. Um, it's like flirty, 30 and thriving, like things. I love it. <laughs> it. You know? So I was just kind of thinking like, well, the next year is coming and um, God knows what it's going to really, bring, um, especially because we're anxiety? now going through a whole pandemic mm -hmm. and you know everything is changing life as we know it so um that's kind of the scope of our conversation today so um my first question is kind of what was your enlightenment period um that like I said that period where everything just seemed to like fall into place for you let's start there where do you go first I'm thinking because um, 30 was 20 years ago for me, <laughs> plus then. And I, I know that I got married at 31. Um, and I know that I, had, I started my career with Royal Caribbean where I stayed there for 18 years. And that was, that was a good ride. All that started with 30, but it, it carried me through with, um, we started to explore the, the country more and the world. We took some international trips during my 30s, but unlike you, Kelsey, it wasn't just 30. It was that whole decade. Um, I think, I, I wonder if you're feeling anxiety because you're entering, 30 was so great and now you're hitting 31 soon and the world is in a totally different place. I don't know. That I, I don't know. I don't know that I would say that I'm anxious. Um, I think I'm just, you know, when you're you're on a roller coaster, kind of. We'll just use that for example. You you know when you're on a ro on a roller coaster or it's some sort of like great ride, and then you're like, I don't I don't want this to end. <laughs> Um, but I think like for me, you know, because everything is, you know, fleshing out like my business and career and just kind of coming into myself as, you know, a woman um, and a person. Um, so I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm, this has been good. Um, and you know, like. I'm not saying that it'll end at all. I'm just saying, like, you know, it's, it's you this is my enlightenment period. Yeah. yeah. I'm, just, I'm sorry. Sherry was going to share. <laughs> well, you know, that is a really hard question for me to answer because I was married by the time I was 30. I had just gotten married in May of that year, and I turned 30 in June of that year, the very next year. And so really for me, my 20s may have been that enlightenment time because mm -hmm. I graduated from college, had my first you know, full-time job, had my first apartment, living on my own, literally off my parents' payroll, paying my own bills. And then I went to graduate school when I was 27, got my MBA and then left with Sam and got married. Um, 
So, you know, I was working. I didn't have my first baby until I was 34. So that time where you are now, 30, was really trying to figure out married life and trying to exist in a marriage but still kind of be my own person. Um, and it took me a long time to figure that part out, like how to be married but still carve out a space for myself to excel or fail, whichever it may be. And when you're failing, it doesn't feel like you're supposed to be failing, um, but, but it is such an important part of your growth. Um, so I would say my 20s, and then I hit it again, really in kind of my late 40s, um, mm -hmm. because that period from 34 to 40 something, 50 something, you know, I was raising children, and that's a whole mm -hmm. different animal. Um, the internet was just coming into play. So, you know, we, it, was, it, was, it was totally different. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have social media. You know, if you were going to do research, you couldn't just jump on a computer right. and do that research. You know, you had to go to a library. You had to look at old newspapers. You had to, you know, find old video. Um, so it was really different. And I will tell you, you never stop evolving. You know, I, and I'm not afraid to put my age out there for you, um, Vanessa, right? Is that, who's not? Yeah, Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Nicole, I am 57 years old and I am still evolving, um, as I should be. I mean, I should still be growing and learning and, you know, failing and learning from the failures to, to keep evolving. Um, so it is a process. So I love seeing, you know, young independent women who are like in, at your age and saying, you know, I'm coming into my own. This is kind of, you know, I'm doing my thing. I've got my own business. You know, here are the goals that I'm setting for myself. Here's where I'm excelling. Here's where I might be falling short, um, but learning from those and how to course correct. Um, so it's it's an ongoing process. I think correct. That is very similar to you, right? You're married and you guys are like you up and moved to Georgia last year and y'all are trying to figure it out. And now you have a baby on the way. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, me and my husband were just talking about how crazy it's been because we, you know, we got married in 2018 and then we moved and then we moved again and now you know here we are we're, we're expecting a, a baby in october so it, it's kind of weird but i would say you know um i think at 29 just that whole year to where we had been married for a year and we i, I was still trying to figure out okay how do i get my career going because I wasn't working for a few months. And so I was like, how do I get my career back? And how do I be a wife? And how do I, you know, he has a pretty demanding career too. So how do I support that? Mm -hmm. And then just when I felt like, okay, I've got this groove, then, you know, it was like, oh, well, here we are. We're going to have a baby. And now I'm like, <laughs> well, how do I, you know, still be a supportive wife? And then, um, still, you know, have my career and, and then be a mom. I, I told him the other day, I said, how am I supposed to think of all this? I feel like I need a huge planner because it's like, I've got, you know, family time to, to worry about my family in Kansas. And then I've got him here and then I, we've got a dog. And <laughs> then we have, you know, this baby, this life where you're, you're responsible for. So it, it, I think 29 for me was kind of like, okay, I've got my groove and now 30, it's just like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is a little, it, it, it feels different, but it's exciting though at the same mm -hmm. time because yeah. you can, I can feel myself growing up and it's different than, you know, single Courtney is, is different than mar just married and married That's Courtney beautiful. now is yes. married yeah. and becoming a mom Courtney and you can see all those changes and, and it feels, it's really exciting. So I think you know, uh, I think that's what has me pretty excited and, and kind of now I, it's weird to say, but like a clicking point for me where it's like, oh, this is, this isn't bad. A, a lot of women do this every day. They do it every day. So, you know, if they can do it, I can too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Of course you can do it. You can totally do it. Your life is just, you're on a different road. You're on a different path right now. And that's totally fine. I mean, that's, 
you know, it, well, I always tell my children, even if it doesn't feel like that, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. You know, God doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. He puts you exactly where you're supposed to be. Um, and, you know, like I said, even though sometimes it may not feel like that at all, but if it's a situation that's uncomfortable, it's just helping you grow and helping you get to, you know, the next road or the next chapter in your journey uh, because that's what it is it's a journey and we take it's twists and turns and things like that and sometimes you may feel overwhelmed like how am I going to do this all how am I going to be a mom a wife a mother a sister a daughter a, but you will you'll, you'll figure it out and you'll have help but you'll figure it out and it'll be fine that's there's no secret sauce magic formula you'll just look back as even if you're not married and and in a relationship, there's, you just, we try to over plan and you should plan and be organized and have goals, but you can't plan everything right. because as soon as you do, you'll be disappointed because God always allows things to come in. God laughs at our plans or something like that. God has a sense of have you heard that? Yes. So, you know, you just, you'll look back five years, 10 years from now and say, I don't know how I did it, but I did it, you know. Well, I don't know. Like I look at back at the twenties and I feel like the twenties were the le the learning curve. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, there was lots of lessons, some ups and some downs, and you know what I mean? And so when I look towards, you know, my thirties, it's kinda like a chill out like I kind of, I'm just more relaxed about coming into my 30s and and I think maybe part of that is just you know you take all these lessons and you learn from them and so like something I had to learn from is, is learning to protect myself and my space and honor myself yeah. and so um you know letting folks you know letting folks go and stuff like that and so like as I start to I think in the last year before 30 just starting to build out a space that was a safe space for me and, you know, letting folks go or letting folks come in and, and letting folks come in. Um, I think that turning 30, I was in a much better mood and mindset than turning 29. Um, yeah, I think that's important too, what you said, because I think that's something that we all have to have to go through at some point, right? Like in order to get to where we're going or to fulfill our purpose or do what we are intended to do or live the way that we, you know, in a peaceful, happy, you know, not that yeah. everything's gonna be sunshine and rainbows, but to have peace in our lives and to be confident and comfortable with where we are. Sometimes we have to let things go, let people go. I know that there's, a lot of people that <laughs> have had to be filtered out, you know, for, you know, for me. Um, I mean, and I think that that's important because you can't, sometimes there's people that kind of, and I don't know that they intend to, cause that, that might not be it, but you know, that there's, there's some relationships that you have with other people that kind of hold you. Yeah. Well, you can't kind of, get to a a new level if you have people who are energetically just not there mm -hmm. and that, that will weigh on you. And so like, I just, I didn't, you know, I think like you, of course they're not doing it on purpose, but you know, you're either going to hold the space for people to learn and grow. Right. Or you can hold that space for like you to like succeed and be better and move to your next level. And like you weigh those two out. It's like, who's more important. Yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I had to learn that lesson the hard way because there you know I, I spent a lot of time in my life you know doing a lot for other people and worrying about other people and trying to be there for everyone except for myself and I found myself like wondering who's going to show up for me well you got to show up for yourself you know so like sometimes you got to carve out that space for you to be able to pay attention to what you want and, you know, who you are or where you want to go because no one's going to take care of you or no one's going to love you or, you know, do you the way that you 
go do it yourself. Yeah. Okay. This week's drink is empty. If you haven't been to Jazzy B's, I encourage you to go. They have amazing food. Oh my God, the barbecue is amazing. But the drink I had came in this jug. It's a blueberry bourbon. It's got blueberry, bacon. Yes, bacon. You can actually take the smokiness. I think this is what gives it that kind of barbecue flavor taste. Oh my, but it's so good. Blueberries, bacon, tea, and bourbon. It's delicious. I, if you haven't been, Go, and it's a black business, so support black businesses. My cup came from Etsy, and I forgot the seller's name, but I will look it up and post it for you because she also is a black business. And my earrings. Support the Crown Act and end hair discrimination in the workplace and in schools.